Greetings. Uh, my name is Jean Helms, and I serve as the Administrative Director at the Unitarian Church of Lincoln, and we are creating this interview for the Share the Plate program. This month, the Share the Plate recipient is the Nebraska Native American Women's Task Force, and I am honored to welcome Colette Yellowrobe and invite her to go ahead and introduce herself. Hello, yes, thank you, Jean, or Nayish. We say Nayish and Karyam, thank you. I am Colette Yellowrobe, hello everyone. I'm an enrolled citizen of the Northern Cheyenne Tribe, which is in Montana, and I grew up in Winnebago, Nebraska, reservation about a couple hours north of where I am right now. And my Cheyenne name is Bon Hayat, and I respond to both, so it's okay. It's ceremonial woman in English. I'm very proud of that part of my family history. It's a very strong name. And also I'm a mother and an educator at the University of Nebraska Lincoln and also a big activist, big scholar activist. And I say big because it's a big, it's a passion part of my life and I give way more time. I will talk about self-care, but believe me, I have to walk my talk on that several times. And I'm familiar with Jean, of course. It's good to see you, Jean, because you do amazing work. And with the task force, our focus has been missing and murdered Indigenous women and girls. And of course, Two-Spirit or trans and men and boys has been the most recent expansion. And I can talk about that when we get to that point. Great, thank you so much. I appreciate you uh, telling us more about your background and Von Hayat, is that correct? Yep, How to very say it? good. Okay. okay. Good job. <laughs> I can be taught. Um, so can you tell me what your role is with the task force uh, and perhaps you know how how it started? I believe that it started with a bill in the legislature two years ago, is that correct? Yeah, before that, yeah, actually, yeah, a little before that. So our history was, um, we were aware of legislation pending, LB-154 is the bill that was a, a bipartisan bill introduced by Senator Pansy Pansy Brooks mm -hmm. and Senator Thomas Brewer, and a couple more signed on with them too, I just can't recall off the top of my head. And so our task force, came together that fall before the spring, you know, spring, obviously, Camp, you know, Campbell comes into. It was dropped in the January unicameral session, legislative session. And we, we formed as a result of a lot of us as individual, meaning individual activists, women activist leaders, uh, mothers, grandmothers, aunts in different parts of the state. For example, I'm thinking of tribal lands, Omaha, Lincoln, of course, Renee would be one, Renee Sanssouci, um, and uh, Michelle Free Lemire up in Winnebago. I'm just trying to remember back then, a few of us came together, Pastor Lynn Quinzer. So we all had our local groups we had a part of, you know, kind of came, coming together. And then we formed a larger group, which was deliberately nonpartisan. And we've set to, it has horizontal leadership right now. Grace and I, Grace Johnson, who's in Omaha, she's Lakota. She's an amazing therapist and educator, mental health practitioner, you know. Mm -hmm. She and I co chair because we wanted to not have just one in charge because that's that hierarchical, mm -hmm. colonized model that's not very effective. Yep. Right. Yeah. So, <laughs> you know, we had the privy of doing that. And we're exclusively on volunteers and service. Like we, we don't get paid for this work, of course, um, but we will take donations. And that's because um, I remember Renee does a lot of talks, more so on Zoom now, which is good, fortunately, because that's safer. But um, we've had some deaths, unfortunately, just some as of last year, very, I mean, you may have seen this in the news. It was very terrible, terrible murders. Yes, yes. I would like to speak about that a little bit because oh, I do sorry. want people to understand, you know, what this is all about. And I want to make sure that people understand the what you were saying about MMIW. So MMIW is, uh, as far as I know, a national organization that okay. has come together or a, a network 
probably a better way to put it. Yeah, I would say network. Yep. Yep. And um, that is for, it started as um, for murdered and missing Indigenous women. And as I heard you say, you've added men, children, you know, boys, and also two spirit, which Mm I, um, I uh, really appreciate because even though I believe that we know from statistics that that men, women and children are the highest statistical um, missing and murdered, we do include the other genders and no gender individuals as well. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, so um, before we get into some of the the recent history, can you tell me more about what what you see as the biggest hurdle at this point? Okay, you know, so yes, the pandemic is very, all three global crises are, I would say it's the erasure in common for Native Americans or Indigenous tribal people. Mm-hmm. It's the way we've been erased so effectively in history. So there's a lot of pre-education we still have to do with MMIW or MMIWG, you know, and then the expanded mm-hmm. letters so so that people understand that it's it originated out of Canada. That's mm-hmm. where the hashtag MMIW movement, you know, came from our Northern relatives. You know, I would say your word about collective is probably the best way because no one can own a cause. You have to think about mm-hmm. it like that, you know, yeah. and it's unfortunate in social justice, racial equity, equality, advocacy. Um, but I would say it's the erasure because people want to help, mm-hmm. especially in Nebraska. I am proud of us for passing LB 154. I believed in us. There was a lot of doubt, to be quite frank, back then. Mm-hmm. This was two years ago on Sunday when it was um, when we testified for it the first time at the unicameral. Yeah. <clears throat> so I would say people can't connect because they have no idea the historical reasons that have led to this. Right. However, once you explain it, then it starts to make sense. And there's actually parallels. They, it, you know, they may understand in different ways. So um, what I hear you say, and um, I'm going to just rephrase it to see if I'm on track, is that with the erasure, that one of the biggest hurdles is pretty much unschooling white people what they learned in school, because we, we didn't learn the real history, right? I mean, that's right. part part of it. Part of it is, um, I think, also uh, from a governmental standpoint, um, recognizing, acknowledging, uh, you know, possibly, you know, honoring the treaties. <laughs> um, that's a big part of the erasure too, as well. So I, I guess the word that came to my mind when I was typing that question and thinking about it myself too, was apathy. So to me, a, a hurdle that goes beyond the erasure is once you unschool people and teach them the real history and and what you know what uh colonization really did um then to me we need to pull people out of apathy and and um and create that awareness create the the impetus for them to create change right Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, one time i have a story for you one time i did a panel with amazing colleagues sisters aunties in the movement, Sarah Deere, for example, at KU, phenomenal, major leader in MMIW in the United States, of course, and, well, on Turtle Island. Um, who else was on there? Marissa was on there, Cummings, uh, gosh, I'm trying to recall. Um, they asked a question, the panelist, uh, moderator, she said, when do you think MMIW started? And we all like, I probably smirked, like, you know, <laughs> And then a couple of others were like, uh, and I can't remember who answered it, but they were like 1492. Like, it's really about teaching people. Um, Yes, non-natives, white people, whomever that what Columbus did was he conquered the land. And then as women, they wanted to conquer our bodies. Mm -hmm. Like we were, we just never stood a chance in that sense. Does it make sense? It's always been a fight. Absolutely, absolutely. Yes, and I I was um, going to ask you. This sort of leads me to another question, and that is um, with connections with some of these other groups, um, such as the Canadian, you know, oh, part, part of MMIW. Yeah. Are there other local organizations that you've partnered with as well? 
Yes. So a lot has happened, good things in two and a half years. So yes, we have a very firm commitment from a stand in for Nebraska, which is a more recent, well, year and a half, maybe. It's kind of concurrent, actually. A lot of our organization affiliations now, they were sort of building upon each other. And then our task force um, came out of a nonpartisan Women of Color Caucus okay. organization out of Omaha as well. And then also uh, more recently, Renee, who I've mentioned a couple of times on Susie, she has started a warrior society. We're we'll it a prayer society in Lincoln. Okay. Or in Nebraska, well, Nebraska, I'm sure things grow fast. When you start mm -hmm. advocacy work, it grows pretty quick. Um, definitely we stay pretty close, pretty close in programming and uh, right advocacy, everything, you know, it just depends on what's going on. And then Grace, who I mentioned co-chairing, she's been quite busy, of course, because she's the mental health component. Right. Absolutely. And then um, we stay affiliated with, oh, Lucinda's group, gosh, I'm, um, oh, what's that one called? I'd have to, can I email some of those? I'm Absolutely. Sure. I can share, I can share things afterwards too. Yeah. Yep. I, that's just my brain. I'll tend to freeze up. Um, and definitely our tribal partners, like reservation experiences, are it's it's different. It needs to be honored in what it is. Well, and that's part that's of the education piece is you have to be aware of what's happening. And to me, that's why the bill itself was. It seems like a small part of it, but from a again from a from a governmental aspect, to me, it's really crucial because you don't have the ability to share the stories if you don't have the data. Right, and you don't have the real, you don't really know the full extent of what's happening unless you have somebody compiling the data, I guess is what I'm thinking. Well, because and LB354, is that what it was? 154. 154. Um, am I correct that the bill, the intention of the bill was to work to get the state patrol to start compiling data and, and sharing uh -huh. it with other organizations? That okay. was one of the main, one of the main tenets, right? Yes, correct. Okay. So, and, um, oh, go ahead. And to your, well, to your astute point there, that's, yes, you're picking up on a couple of things that was good to set up that mandate, that state mm -hmm. mandate that, yes, the NFP um, will be empowered or be required to work with in reporting mm -hmm. homicide data, you know, murder um, and also, but the downside to that bill was there was no, there was no fiscal note attached to it. Oh, okay. So they, you know, they were, it was, it passed with flying colors, full support, but there was no fiscal note. Right. So that means now, yes, you're right, Jean, the real work is starting. Right. Well, and so, what, so they passed it, but in a sense, um, we almost have to take a second step to provide funding. Is that what I'm hearing you say? Right, which is Our, gonna take a combination of factors, you know? Okay. So, and there was a report commissioned. That's pretty typical in certain mm -hmm. bill situations in our state. They mm -hmm. did commission that report and um, I can share that with you. Okay. If you want. Um, yes, which is um, the legislation was passed. So that's the big win. That's the huge accomplishment and now comes a lot of coordinating which will require yes to your point Jean earlier about more research mm -hmm. there will have to be more um dedicated research projects that with respect you know of course working with tribes sure and then second you know so we're not repeating old bad habits and systems of erasure and racism and then secondly there's also there were other bills that were ass that assisted as well mm -hmm. that Senator Patty put through about okay. um, sex work and prosecuting, you know, like the, they would say the Johns or the, mm -hmm. the Pits or whatever. I don't know the scholarly word for that. Yeah, story, I remember but, that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it was a very deliberate series of legislation because MMIW is very unique. It's, you know, it must stay dedicated and in indigenous native peoples. However, it's, it's, it comes together with trafficking, smuggling, of course, and then sex work. It does converge. Absolutely. Like our other vulnerable populations. Right. And, you know, I, I appreciate you um, 
addressing earlier, beginning to address some recent history. And if you would like to share about Ashley Aldridge, I would, I think that um, may have been what you were referring to. And um, I, I do believe that there are members and friends of ours that are aware, but I would like you to um, touch on that because again, I think that it helps us to know the stories of what's happening and the local stories are very impactful. Okay, so let's start with Cozy. Cozy was in Winnebago. We had a rally for her um, last summer because that's when one of the hearings was going on down in Omaha, down at the federal courthouse. And she was a young woman, Winnebago, Ho-Chunk and Northern Cheyenne, actually my tribe. And she was, um, without getting into details, because I don't want to tell her story without her right. family's permission, right. so to speak, but she was brutally, brutally, brutally victimized by her ex-partner. Okay. She was going to move and that was mm -hmm. just, oh, it was, it's, it's a horrific story. It really is. She was found in a very rural, and I grew up there, so I know the way they were talking about, a very rural, desolate part of close to the river. So we're talking way out in the woods, way out in the country, far away. And in, in um, Nebraska? Winnebago, where I grew okay. up, Winnebago, okay. on the Winnebago Reservation. Yep. I'm sorry yeah. to hear that. Yep. Lost, she left behind children and Last summer, the the group of us came together to um, rally outside the courthouse when the the person in question. I'm not sure if they formally charged you, Matt. So I, you have to be careful yeah. the way you say things. Yeah. But that was his. Um, so there has not been resolution at this point. I would have to check, but okay. I can technically check on that. But okay. that's what the day he was entering his plea. That okay. was that you know one of the first or two hearings. And her mother was there. So, you know, consent is important is what I'm trying to say. Working with the family, it's very important to have consent because it's about them and their healing. Exactly. You know, so in terms of being an activist or, or walking in allyship, which even means with your own people at times, you have to be very, very respectful. It's, it's a very, it's tough work. That's why you could probably see me shifting a little bit because when I go back and think about that, it's it's a lot and it has to be done. Of course. With of course. our ways, you know, to help us. Of course, yes. And Ashley is another case. It's controversial. I'm just going to let you know that right now. It's, there is no resolution to that case. And um, her mother is very, very much a a phenomenally strong, beautiful Omaha woman, Omaha woman, and the family needs support the best way they can. A lot, a lot of intersections of, I would say system failing, tribal politics became involved, you know, and we had a, which Renee led, fortunately, with, you know, good ways and prayer, you know, we had a vigil for her down here in Lincoln. We actually processed with the community mm -hmm. about a year ago. It'd be actually about a year ago now that I think about it. Wow. And so, the, and uh, I know I was I started to say earlier, January seems to be a very important month for this work and, yep. and unfortunately a dangerous month. Um, what I what I believe that I know is that Ashley Aldridge was, as you said it from the Omaha reservation and a relative of Renee Sansusi, her niece, um, she recognizes her as her niece. Um, and um, as far as I know, there has not been resolution in that case either. Um, um, you know, I, I, I do think that it's politically tender. Um, so if you don't want to get into this part, it's okay. But I, I guess what I'm hearing is that it's multi-layered. It starts with um, not only raising awareness, um, but also um, stepping into some of those tender areas of reservation politics and, and what, what those systems, how those systems are failing women and children also. Um, so 
and and so I appreciate you acknowledging and just helping us to understand all of us um, that it, it's tender and that um, you can easily step into territory that you're not um, prepared to deal with, right? Mm -hmm. Like I wouldn't necessarily know um, some of those nuances and how to how to properly, you know, behave or, you know, you know what I'm saying. <laughs> I do. And it's just so, it's, so complex to me. It's very complex and it's very, um, a way to think about it in a parallel way is think about jurisdiction. Think mm -hmm. about like we live in Lincoln, right? There's federal, state, county, then your local. Mm -hmm. You know, there's layers to that federal, uh, and I mean law enforcement jurisdiction. Sure, of course. So on the reservation, the way it works, it's, these are facts. Um, yes, you have the tribal government because we're sovereign nations, domestic sovereign nations in the United States, which is, you know, bound by treaty. So it's the ultimate law of the land. Right. And then also um, they elect their own tribal council members. You know, we're empowered with that autonomy. And then the police force is usually uh, things have changed where they have their own police force which can be through the bia bureau of indian affairs that's kind of another story though too <laughs> yeah so, several it, stories actually right and so <laughs> in the case of both cozy and um ashley since their partners were nate ex-partners excuse me were native they're accused were native so that automatically is federal jurisdiction when it goes to murder okay so even the BIA cops must call in the FBI at that point in time is what I'm saying. Right. So there's another problem. We have families, I'm not thinking of anyone in particular, but we have families where they don't know the legal terms or kind of the autopsy report, that's a big issue. And when the federal officials or whomever in the case of district, federal district attorneys are talking to families, there's a lot of problems there as well we've seen quite a few problems actually mm, I, and, I think I know what you're talking about um I'm thinking of my own family member that I lost I'm thinking of another pretty pretty infamous case in our state um I would say probably the women we've been talking about this has been a problem we also have an issue with coroner and autopsy reports mm. So there, okay. there's an aspect of MMIWG, MMIR, MMIR is missing and murdered indigenous relative, you know, the broader okay. encompassing term, where um, they will say the, the young woman died of exposure. She was drunk or whatever. So but erasure not, again, we're talking. Right, we're, but not yeah. the domestic violence or not the, you know, beat to hell, excuse my language, or left dropped off you know in the middle of nowhere right so that partner ex-partner or whatever you want to call that predator you we can't hold them accountable because the autopsy is saying exposure does mm -hmm. that make sense so absolutely yes there's big problems there or i never would have even thought about that but what is it? Uh, excited delirium oh that's one of my favorite ones oh that's just <laughs> and i'm being sarcastic that's terrible that was in the case Excited of that. Excited delirium. Yes, when he was killed. Which is basically addressing someone's mental stability. Well, they right? beat him. I mean, too. you know, they teased him. To the, I mean, that was pretty. Right. You're talking about Bear Hills? Yeah. Jason Bear Hills. Bear Hills. Yeah. Yeah. And other MMIT, like, I'm telling you, when you, you don't want to say things are common in this work, when you hear the same reporting, autopsy reporting, and it's it's more common than we think. Right. Well, again, though, I guess that leads me back to thinking about the the gathering of the data because you start seeing those connections, right? I mean, and not even at just at the state level. Um, I feel like that's a really important part of the, the networking and, and uh, co um, collaboration with other states and other, even even other countries, Canada specifically. Oh, Mexico, Mexico, mm -hmm. definitely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Turtle Island, North America, yeah. That reminds me, uh, I just uh, 
earlier you you referenced Turtle Island and um, hopefully most people watching this know what Turtle Island means, the earth and our nation, right? But um, I'm aware of a very, very new organization locally possibly um, with that Renee, name. Is, yes, that, yes. is that what you were talking about with the warrior um, yes. group? Okay. Yes. Yes. I wasn't sure if those were the same thing or if I was making that up in my brain. <laughs> no, no, no. You're very, very astutely connecting. That's what you're doing. <laughs> yes. The Nebraska Turtle Heart Society. That's the Turtle warrior prayer. I say prayer because of the spiritual dimension. That's so critical. Sure. And um, on that note, you know, I was visiting with Renee and so, you know, I wanted to make sure like, because I was like, I'll probably talk about you. So I wanted to make sure <laughs> and say, it's a big deal for me. Consent. Um. And when I was talking with Renee, it dawned on me that with our MMIW work, I'm just going to say that for the sake of, because it's easy yeah. for me to talk. Um, in Nebraska, we, all, we almost have all aspects of the medicine wheel. We just have to keep moving in. And we've been trying in the education efforts, mm -hmm. you know, that social, mental, physical, and then spiritual, that's the four dimensions of a medicine wheel or other, you know, other cultures, it's similar, mm -hmm. similar concept. And so I really had a good feeling. And so it was your interview who got me to, this got me to have that epiphany. So I thank you for that. Cause that, those little just things are important to us. The realization so that all four yes. pieces are here and we just need to connect, make the connections. Is that what you mean? Yes, yes. And you're not alone. I always try to tell people that because you can feel alone quick in this mm -hmm. work. It's Absolutely. evil. I call it especially evil. now, but yes, in any time it's any it's it's lonely, thankless work sometimes, and and as mm -hmm. you said before, unpaid work as well. <laughs> in most cases, um, and grassroots. That's the that's why it's not it's grassroots work. Yep, grassroots activism. Yep. But it also leads to it can change policy. It can. So, is there any? Uh, thing coming up that you want to talk about. Uh, you mentioned there yeah. were some things on the burners, but uh, some of them you can talk about and others you may not be able to yet. Um, well, you know, as luck would have it, you know, time's lining up, sneaking up, however you believe. Um, so let's start with just as of yesterday. I don't know if you know, this will impact MMIW and all of our sexual assault victims. I don't know if you noticed one of the EO's executive orders he released. And this morning, I will go watch that later. Our attorney general here in the state is ready to talk about sexual assault kits and then getting that um, where it should be. And so right. that's going to impact not just Nate, all, all of us, and, and boys, women, boys, men, trans, you know, all mm -hmm. genders or no gender. Um, so that's, I bring that up because that will also open up more opportunities that was typically never funded. That's what, I mean, they have kits that are, I mean, you know, and yes. then we're rockly convicting people too. I'm thinking of Just Mercy, you know, remember Brian, what's his name? Oh my gosh. Brian Stevenson, yep. Right, yep. that's a whole different thing, right? Ugh. Absolutely. But, um, ugh, disgusting. But um, when Renee had, I'm trying to think about how to talk about this because I'll put my disclaimer out first. This was the first time that I've ever talked about my own relative who I named my oldest son after, Chase. And so Sunday when Renee had her um, rally or I'm not sure how, gathering at the Capitol on the west side of the Capitol, the not Nebraska Turtle Heart Society, um, I had a big block. Like I was like, what am I gonna talk about? She was like, can you talk about MMIW? You know, we, we work to get, you know, we all work yeah. together. Mm -hmm. And so, I ended up just talking from the heart, which is my cultural way. Traditionally, tribally, you are taught, you speak from the heart, you speak the truth and you speak from the heart. And I, I knew, had a couple of things I knew I wanted to talk about, you know, just for framing, you know, in general, keeping people up to date, like where we are now in legislation or community events. And then it really dawned on me that I have always been so afraid, I guess, or I didn't think it was my place, I suppose, to advance relatives work especially men and boys trans and two-spirit work mm -hmm. in our state in our state you know i can't other places are doing great 
great jobs, you know, it's, right, right. It's a terrible thing we're doing. But um, when I got up there, I finally advanced it. And I say I, but I mean we. We finally advanced it because it's time and it's long overdue. And ironically, the report that came out after LB 154 did show that actually men, Native men or boys or however, you know, they could be two spirit too, you know, but mm -hmm. they're identified. That's a whole other thing. How are yeah, data? Yeah. What data? Oh my God. Right, right. Um, <laughs> sorry, I'm so casting to your fault. Uh, um, but they're actually the highest group. And oh, then we okay. Have blistering cases like Zachary Bear Hills, which he's an MMIP case. He indeed is. That is right. totally. And uh, I, another man, technically who died in Iowa, but with the COVID pandemic. But you know, it's it's atrocious what's going on. So it's time that we moved MMIWG Nebraska Task Force Women's Task Force to include our male man to spirit partners and relatives. So as a result, we are going to host an event in the next, probably we're looking at the end of February or March, or not March, the end of March, early March, we're gonna have a um, tentatively a community gathering, maybe, I don't know if it'll be a vigil like we did for Ashley Aldrich, but it's gonna be a community gathering for our male relatives. Okay. And I have to go take tobacco yet to Renee actually and to her partner who's she's a male in Omaha is gonna help her, Chato. So I so I will get that done. As soon as Understood. I snow that stuff. Yeah, Understood. yeah. That's a cultural thing we have to do. You have to ask them in a good way. But mm -hmm. when I tentatively was talking with her about it, she's she's open to it. But now I just need to go make that agreement and that offering to her in the right way. Okay. And to sell, but we want to have South qualified, of course, to do this. He's a licensed mental health therapist too, as well. But we want to start this movement into men and boys in a good way, which is in that spiritual mental way where you have to bring people together. And we'll probably have a meal. So what I'm hearing you say is that the 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 terminology is important, uh, at which I agree. Um, words are very important and. Um, to date, the the lingo that's used is MMIWG. They added the G, right? Yeah. <laughs> but but what is just now happening, and what you're trying to raise awareness about um, in Nebraska in the next couple of months is um, broadening that to all of our relatives. And so, yeah. um, the terminology will change to MMIR, yeah. possibly, for all of our relatives. Yeah. I think that's really important, and it's also a bit easier to uh, get your words around. You know, um, less less initials, <laughs> the better. It's kind of like with the LGBTQIA plus community. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. we just keep adding letters, and then it becomes sort of difficult, <laughs> if not ridiculous. <laughs> um, I don't know how though. Oh, I. I'm going to do both for a while because I want people to understand, you know, kind of, I'm not really an advertising person, so I'm not well trained in this. It's, so it's, it's more about the inclusion. That's where we're coming sure. at it from. And that would be on the Northern Plains, relatives would be a, a term that we can all get around, you know, tribally. Mm -hmm. We're not the same, of course, but we'll, we'll understand what we're saying. Sure. And Honestly, Jean, I was actually called out at first. That's what I'm saying. This has taken me a while and my own healing, my own family, my own men and my, you know, mm -hmm. uh, that's why I said I, first time I talked about Chase and he died in 96, you know, he's, wow. an, he's an MMIP case. So my point being, I remember, and I would call him a friend. One of my friends here in town, Lakota friend was like, well, what about men? What about men? Collect, you know, not challenging me, but calling me out in the sense of like this is great but you and I both know and we knew anecdotally that there's a lot of men who go missing to and gay men you know or boys who are kind of maybe you know runaways you know they're right. vulnerable like who knows what's going on at home I'm not trying to exempt families if there's abuse going on right there's reasons our kids well, and, are and as away. you said earlier there's a big crossover with um 
trafficking and sexual oh, abuse absolutely. and yes. you know yes. it, it is all connected and, and um, yes those those to me those collaborations those networks are super important because what one organization is working towards does affect another and it's it's why I really appreciate you getting into some of the details because it helps us to understand um and and as I and as I have grown and in my allyship and my advocacy I have also realized the connections with poverty you know economics mm -hmm. Oh yes. You know, food insecurity, oh. housing options. Um, I mean, and you know, I, I want to just sort of reiterate what you said a minute ago too, that um we are in a very historic moment. Um with our new president signing executive orders. I am cautiously optimistic. Um, but the simple fact that our president, our new president, has um made to me, what seems like a very bold statement uh, about racial equity is a great thing, but what comes next is more important, right? Like, I agree that it's it's a very historic moment, and and I am am very ecstatic about it. But I also don't want to get, I don't want it to. Then this, I'm talking just about me, not anyone else. But I don't want it to cause me to um, slip back into uh, complacency. And thinking that oh now our pres our president will take care of it right because we know that's not the truth we know that the real work is happening at the local level and with these collaborations and that the real work now is to take that bold statement that has been made at our at our nation's capital and and get out our megaphones that's really how I feel about it mm -hmm. uh, to put it on blast and say you know. The work hasn't changed. It doesn't mean that we have to work less hard. It actually means we have to work more hard now to, um, I don't want to use the word capitalize, but to really to really embrace this moment and, and um, help to move things forward, <laughs> perhaps more quickly than we would have been able to last year. But it doesn't, to me, it... To me, it's wonderful, and uh, at the same time, I am concerned about um, people thinking that's like, okay, check that box. We're we're all done with white supremacy now. Oh, you know, yeah. you know what I mean? Oh. Like, I just, I know, I know that you and I don't think that way, but I, I am concerned about that, and I, I don't want the complacency and the apathy to, um, to come into play. So I think we have to talk about it. And we have and to acknowledge I, that, you know, it's very real, still very real. Uh, him signing his name on a executive order is not going to just automatically flip the script, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Um, yeah, you friend, know that. I'm not saying yeah. it for your benefit. <laughs> I know, I know. I'm just uh, because my <laughs> friends were like, what is that? I was like, I know, I know. Like, I got some pu playful pushback about that. Not that yeah. it's funny, but I was like, yeah, yeah it was the... Yeah yeah we will believe it and we see it yep mm -hmm. and i appreciate you bringing me back down into details because i do tend to really think about this work in systemic policy terms and to clarify with the relatives component of what you know what we're i don't want to say ushering out it sounds like a campaign like this is <laughs> activism it is activism um but the another reason why the policy, the bills like LB one fifty four and all that were addressed is the woman is the family unit; it's the core. So it really was about addressing and getting our family stabilized. So it was done and with really good intent. We we really should be proud of our policymakers for that, and very informed. Did the work. They did the work before we were in three global crises. So that being said. MMIR or the male men, however, remember, we also have a very patriarchal dominant, you do not cry, let alone, you know, speak if you've been assaulted, you know, right. or, you know, we are very good at keeping that hidden and under the rug and don't deal with it. Mm -hmm. So I say awareness with that, like we're okay. starting okay. the advocacy. 
uh, one of my friends, she's a reporter, she asked me, is there legislation yet? And I was like, oh, oh no, like we are, no, well, I'm proud of our start with awareness. I, you know, <laughs> well, you know, yeah, I could get shut down real quick as a Cheyenne woman in the center, you know, like that, talk about forces at work. That's, that's a sure. heavy lift. That's sure. a monumental lift. So I hope everyone can see how serious I am. Be very informed. And so, uh, so for the time being, it is best to continue using the terminology MMIW, possibly adding the G, but then acknowledging that we, as advocates for this work are including others kind of the way you introduced it at the beginning until there's a shift is that what you're saying that it's 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 politically difficult and the shift hasn't really happened yet and so don't no, it's change happening. Okay. okay so for us it's happening so okay. the grass level, tribal level people native people indigenous people it's happening okay it's happening and then once you get in the work as this you know it's you see it like okay. it's there and so MMIWG, yes, we are formally, we will always be that in terms okay. of the Native Women's Task Force. That's, you know, that's going to be a part of us. Okay. All, but also we, in this work, Jean, you understand, which is why we're trying to advance our education efforts. There's women, Native women's empowerment. You know, there's other dimensions. Absolutely. And unfortunately, because of the public killing of George Floyd, you know, MMIW, we are in solidarity with hashtag BLM, of course. Right. You know, so we have solidarity as well with other extremely critical causes. It's a crisis. Absolutely, and that's been uh, what I what I've seen from. You know, what I kind of the sidelines. I mean, I haven't been as active this year for multiple reasons, but what I have been seeing is that there are collaborations happening with uh, BLM with Black Lives Matter and locally and nationally, and also, um, as you mentioned earlier, with the Women of Color group um, mm -hmm. and the Turtle Island Society. So that is, um, there's been some really important work happening even during the pandemic um, and probably primarily on Zoom, but um, I see that as one of the benefits actually of the pandemic is that it's created new, new connections because of the new um, technology that we're taking advantage of, I guess, but um, it, it kind of brings me back to uh, the one of the last questions that I wanted to ask you is what gives you hope? And you've talked about it a little bit um, with the executive order yesterday, but is there anything else you would like to mention as far as what, what gives you hope in this work? Um, oh, today? yeah, not, not man, no, not no, not not just, oh, no, no, no. Yeah, you'll get to know me, Jean, no. <laughs> <laughs> I would say creator. It's, you have to stay very grounded in who you believe in or however you ground. Yeah, try to be pretty open how I say things. It's when I get um, reminders, when things are syncing up, you know, things are... Uh, things are going, or you get, like I would say, uh, you get signs from however you believe that you're going in the right direction. Mm -hmm. However, one story, I did an interview last fall, of course on Zoom, because you know, from one of our students where I work at the university, I don't remember what, call, what class she was in, but she interviewed me for, about MMIW stuff, mm -hmm. you know, MMIWG. And she grew up, she's a Caucasian white girl. She grew up in kind of where I did in Northeast Nebraska. I know where she's from and how she talked about her mom was actually cognizant of these problems, you know, years ago, you know, we're talking seventies, eighties, which of course it was going on. Mm -hmm. And I, it really struck me how it is, has been the intercultural, interracial or inter, you know, solidarity that really, that really gave me more hope. That really did. And then um, our BLM partners or, you know, us, uh, them allowing us to support them has been an honor because I believe in that. You have to have consent and solidarity. It's not always just, it can't be just, you know, I want to help. You can't go charge in even though you right. want to. So it's an egregious issue, however it caused. But um, I've learned that the hard way for sure. 
Right. Well, and you know, and then I also think, um, well, I don't think, I believe the healing I've seen, the healing I've seen just in personal, of course, I won't say, I can't say who, personal situations, men, women, true spirit, how I've seen healing go on. Sure. And probably lastly, the biggest hope is our future. It's the younger ones. There, it is, when I was protesting, of course, because I'm that person, I'm a front, I can't sit on my hands during a pandemic or racial sure. injustice. Going on. When I was at almost all of the protests I got to go to, it was an, it's an interracial cultural solidarity support. And it's, that is a moving moment in time. It really checks that Western psyche and ego of me, me, me. Mm -hmm. And it really shows you how much, how much more they know than we mm -hmm. do. Yes. And I, I, I appreciate you bringing that up because I have been trying to really tune into things that are being said and, and, you know, magnified about, um, young people, young black women specifically, mm -hmm. and, um, honoring them for the immense work that they're doing. Um, as you said, during the pandemic and after the killing of George, George Floyd, um, there has been, um, thankfully, a lot of amplification, um, if we can listen, if we can, me, if I can listen, right? So um, I appreciate you bringing that up and, um, and sharing some of the things that give you hope because um, it's, it's good to hear that um, that you do see signs of change and, and at the same time recognize that we still have a lot of work to do, you know? Oh yeah. I think what, you know, those who, who commit to it, you know, like for us, it, it's a way of life. Like maybe you've heard Renee, she's such an amazing teacher, you know, it's a way of life. You commit to it. It's yes. not a, it's not a hashtag. It's not a cause. It's, it becomes yes. your way of life. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of work to do. Believe me there, it, you know, cause I guess that would be one of the ways the pandemic has affected us. Cause you really do get to um, work with um, partners or people that can help you. Cause you know, tech is not my wheelhouse. So mm -hmm. I have some great friends, friends, Meaning I'm their friend. I may not be their friend, but I, they're my friend now. So <laughs> look. Yes, I totally understand. We have to, we have to find partners to fill the gaps. We can't do, we can't do it yeah. all. Yeah, it's not We're, my wheelhouse. It's not, you know, and I don't want it to be my wheelhouse. But <laughs> I feel like I've taken up a lot of your time, but there is one thing I really feel like we need to end with. And that is, can you tell us beyond, you know, helping with possibly some funds, some contributions to help move the work forward. Is there anything else that you would share with our members and friends that we can do to help, you know, move the cause forward, help, you know, um, what else can be done besides just throwing money at the problem, I guess is really what I want to say. I want to, I would like us to be involved on a deeper level and, and know what specifically we can do. It, it, does it go back to what we were talking about at the beginning with education and apathy? Um, I would say that's a great place to start. Yes educating oneself and also um especially as this expands you know meaning we hopefully will address our male relatives um i would say having um i think having additional online you know because we're going to be in the pandemic for a while virtual online forums is a great way it's kind of like with multicultural ed you know i'm an educator so i of course our diversity inclusion, don't just do it in the month, like November mm -hmm. Native American month or our day formally in the United States is May 5th. That's MMIW Awareness Day. Don't just do it then. Does that make sense? You know, yes. 
so be aware of it and and possibly you know get on board and amplify on May fifth, but also um, make it a year round uh, passion. Right. On whatever right. level you're capable of, <laughs> right? Because right. um, I appreciate that, and um, I hear you saying that there are some things coming up soon that. Um, you know, for example, uh, the possibility of a, a rally or, or gathering um, in February or March. So we'll look for that um, and look for ways to amplify that as well. It'll probably be a gathering, you know, the gathering. rallies, that's kind of a different format, you know. And sure. then another way that people can get involved, um, especially in their networks, I like to try to activate networks, you know, especially people who are drawn to this, whether it's their heart or, you know, economic, you know, it's their choice, mentally intelligent. Um, there are some great, there's great work being done. And now I'm starting to remember all the additional partners, of course. Um, the Ponca tribe has been very supportive. The Human Trafficking Coalition in the state made a connection to them. You know, there, there's a lot of synergy going on. I'm thinking of my, um, she's actually Cheyenne too. On the national level, when you talked about data, uh, Anita, my friend, she does Sovereign Bot Bodies Institute. Okay. Well, I'm working on a book and I actually want to donate some of those proceeds to her, however that's going to work. I don't understand that, but I'm learning as a writer though, um, editor. And then um, I would, so she does data in a way that's indigenous based, you know, that's not reductive or we're not just a number, if that makes sense, you know, that's, it's very good work. And then I believe that the arts, music, and cultures, you know, are a good way to advance this. Okay. And that could be incorporated in with some kind of, uh, you know, online sharing that could include music and art as well, um, yeah. as, as well as information and education. So there's a lot of, yeah. a lot of different um, ideas happening. Synergy, right. as you said. And I'm familiar with the with the Unitarian Church. I know the great work that you all do there. I attended an event, I'm trying to recall, um, it was a couple years ago through my university uh, work. So I do know you all do this kind of stuff. You can even host movies. I know you've done yes. some of your work and I'm sure you've adapted. This was pre-pandemic, yes. right? Yes. Mm -hmm. You know, there's unfortunately movies about this, you know, it's even made it to, I think it was on the show Tombstone, there's an episode. Yes, as a matter of fact, the, um, the virtual film festival that was supposed to happen last April included a lot of the um, native uh, films. Uh, and of course, it didn't end up happening. We were supposed to be hosting one of the films for that. And um, hoping that comes back around and that we can can re-up that effort because we were honored to be able to participate in that um, and then it wasn't able to happen um, but I do I just want to say uh, I've asked a lot of your time today and I really appreciate um, the opportunity to get to know you better to hear uh, about the wonderful work that you're doing um, thank you so much for taking time out of your day to do this and it is Truly, my greatest hope that we can come and have you uh, speak in person once we're back in the building and host you um, at the church for in whatever uh, synergistic way that comes together. Um, I look forward to that. Yes, it'll be great. It'll be great. Thank you so much. Nika. so good to see you. Um